how can we attain happiness and not just for a moment, right? How can we truly be happy? So when I was thinking about this particular topic, I didn't really get to one magical answer. Mm -hmm. But what I did find is that there's a way to improve your mood significantly. And if your mood is better, mm -hmm. then chances are you're much happier. So many people confuse happiness with your mood, right? Mood is very temporary, it's just momentary. Mm -hmm. And that's not happiness. Happiness is much more eternal. It's much more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. But if you can get a better mood, chances are you will be in a better position mm -hmm. to get happy. Mm -hmm. And how do you achieve a better mood? It's so easy, right? Yeah. Sleep more, <laughs> go to the restroom, and have a full stomach. That is the foundation. If I'm already grumpy, <laughs> which happens, mm -hmm. and I let's like my stomach is full, mm -hmm. I've gone to the bathroom. I can't now just take a nap for you know another eight hours. Mm -hmm. How do I, how do I transition right from that grumpy mood mm -hmm. to a happy mood? You got to be able to hack into your life experiences that put you in a happy place. Hmm. Um, everybody has their own. Uh, maybe it could be as easy as always having dark chocolate nearby, right? To be able to take <laughs> it, and suddenly you're in a happier place. For me, um, I love open water swims. So if I'm in a pool, if I'm you know in the ocean, suddenly I'm you know, on vacation. And then if you could sprinkle two or three of those things throughout your day, you perpetually reset your mood. One of those things for me, <laughs> and it's like a guilty pleasure type thing, is dancing. So it's like the mood is almost like a primer right. to happiness. Again. This is better, it's not best. Yeah. You, you might not achieve happiness, <laughs> but if you just focus on this for a week, your life will be changed. So luckily, I uh, am a, the family counsel to a lot of families. And so even though I'm a very new parent, my child's only one years old, being able to see so many different families gave me a perspective because I get to see what they do, all the things that they plan for. Mm. And I was like, wow, that's so much, so much work. And then having, you know, been sort of raised in two different cultures in the US and Taiwan, mm. um, also lived in London and, and Shanghai for a while, seeing so many different cultures do different things makes me really reflect on there's gotta be a better way mm. to be a good parent, to be a better parent. Um, and I think one thing to, to shortcut everything else is to invest in yourself as the parent and to bring the child along with you. So um, I see a lot of parents invest heavily for their kids to go out to do stuff. A lot of camps, a lot of schooling, a lot of teachers and a lot of activity. But then it makes me think as a parent, they are pretty successful in what they do and they have all these experience, but somehow they would sacrifice all of that and give and let the child be taught by somebody else. Mm. But realistically, what does the child want? The child wants to be with the parent, at least early on, right? Yeah. Pre-junior high, I feel like the parents and the child has such an inclination towards the parents. Mm -hmm. And if the parents have the time, the capacity to do the things with the kids mm -hmm. and invest themselves. So the biggest indicator of a child's success is, is, is more the parents than anything else. But a lot of times the parents just don't invest in themselves. They, they tire themselves completely. They're constantly unhappy. That doesn't seem to be a great dynamic to perpetuate success. Mm -hmm. If the parent could be a little bit more relaxed, a little bit happier, and bring the child along with the happiness and the grief. Maybe the parents suffered some major loss, letting the child experience that and seeing the resilience in the parent, that will teach a far better lesson than forcing the kid to learn piano. The good way to tap and shortcut kind of being a good parent is, um, or being a better parent, is focusing on yourself and bringing your child along with you. How can we start doing that now in simple ways? Health and fitness is important to everyone. Yeah. Um, to be able to be fit, to be healthy. Um, and if that is on your radar of something that you really want to do, but you just never haven't found time to do it because you're sacrificing it for the kid's piano lesson, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe bring them in. Let's all be healthy and fit and they see mommy and daddy's plans to get on the soccer team. When's the last time you really saw your dad run, right? But now <laughs> seeing your dad run through the field chasing a soccer ball would be pretty interesting for the kid, right? Totally. And then seeing them get better and better shape, seeing them succeed or and fail and get yelled at by a coach, 
letting the kid experience success and failure. My mom maybe ran once. <laughs> like, I mean, but like, that's true. It's like, even now, as a kid, like, that would make me really happy to see my parents doing fun things. Kids might not do what you say, but they will copy what you do. So investing on making yourself better as a parent is a faster way to shortcut on how to improve your kids. I have three brothers. And often when we have family birthday parties with extended family, Maybe my aunt will ask, maybe my grandma, where's your girlfriend? And my brothers will always be like, oh, we don't date. You know, we don't date. And I'm like, that's not true. Mm -hmm. You can't date. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because okay. I'm the sister. Uh -huh. So for boys in general, uh -huh. how can we help them get dates? One way is just to dress better. I go to coffee shops a lot, I walk around, I just see, you know, if people are on a date, the girl obviously spent an hour, two hours getting ready. Of course. And the guy looks like he just rolled out of bed. Yeah, he probably did. <laughs> probably did. So for most guys, just dressing a little bit better, the mm -hmm. hygiene, the hair, do something that will easily help you stand out from mm -hmm. the 80%. For the guys who don't like to shop, mm -hmm. they think it's a huge chore, yes. and they definitely don't want to spend a lot of money on clothes or on appearance, yes. then what they should do is just find one, two, or three simple outfits. Okay that is just classic and consistent and easy to maintain and cheap mm. and just stick with that. It's not just to get you to look prettier, mm -hmm. right? It's to get the recognition that you deserve because you are a man of character mm -hmm. and you are worth, you know, a woman's love <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and they're gonna see that when you take care of yourself. Just go to Target and get some new clothes and immediately it'll be better. It is not really expensive. No, yeah. no, like bleach the whites. You know, uh, make yeah. the whites white. Right. right. <laughs> or even along with that, like carriage, like mm -hmm. like your posture. So little things, right? And then you're able to increase your chances that much. So it's totally worth doing. Most guys who don't like to shop or whatever, they're, they're, they're wearing the same thing they're wearing in high school. It's been 20 years, but it still works, right? It doesn't smell that bad, right, or whatever. <laughs> but if you just one clean out and you just stick to, a th you know, walk into Target, whatever's on the mannequin, just buy that. Oh. I don't even have to think, just my right size, I'm gonna buy that. And one once a year, Great just tip. I have this one outfit, right? That's wow. it.